Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Whee! Deadpool! Yeah, at long last, the Merc with a Mouth splatters his way across the screen, and if you're a fan of Deadpool, this is everything you'd have hoped for. If you're not a fan of Deadpool, prepare yourself. This movie is hyper-violent, snarky, and just plain fun from open to close. There's not much else to it but wall-to-wall -wall jokes and violence, and really, that's okay. At a time when the superhero myth has been spun and deconstructed multiple times, usually with a morose or cynical tone, there's something to be said for a movie that is just all killer, no filler, and doesn't take itself too seriously. And at just an hour and 48 minutes with credits, which you will want to sit through this time, Deadpool doesn't come close to wearing out its welcome and virtually guarantees a fun night out at the Cineplex. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. Did I mention that Deadpool is fun, fun, fun? Because I really should. As a story, especially an origin story, it feels awfully slight though. There are only two major action set pieces, but one of them, the freeway chase you've seen in the trailers, is so long and so complicated and so awesome that it's split up into pieces and parsed out over the course of the film. Starting from the absolutely no perfect opening credit sequence, a hugely irreverent tone is established that carries through the whole film. Deadpool don't give a damn, y'all. He'll break the fourth wall. He'll make jokes about Ryan Reynolds movies. He'll rip on the X-Men. He'll rip on 20th Century Fox. The general rule seems to be, if it's funny, leave it in. Consistency be damned. After teasing the audience with the introduction to that freeway mayhem and carnage, Deadpool flashes back to very briefly and succinctly tell the story about Wade Wilson, a smartass former soldier who has made a pretty good living as a mercenary beating and killing people for money, and working out of a bar that, like the hotel in the movie John Wick, has a fascinating sense of unspoken mythology of its own. It's where you go to hire someone to mess somebody up for you. At this bar, he strikes up a romance with a prostitute who has the same wicked sense of humor as he does, and it's love at first sight. I to ask you, only because you haven't gotten around to asking me. Will you, um, stick it Marry me? Uh... The chemistry of Wade and Vanessa is palpable and believable, and their love is one of the few things that grounds the story. When Wilson suddenly discovers he has late-stage inoperable cancer, a shady organization approaches with an offer to save his life by experimenting on him and turning him into an indestructible killing machine. But hey, no cancer. When this company, represented by bad guys Ajax and Angel Dust, turns on him and leaves him for dead, Deadpool goes on a murderous rampage of revenge, which eventually puts his fiancée, Vanessa, in danger and requires him to swallow his pride and ask for help from the X-Men. Well, actually only two X-Men in particular. Deadpool does make a pretty funny joke that including the other X-Men would have been too expensive for the studio. The X-Men that do get involved are Colossus, who is a lot of fun here, and, uh... I want to get this name right. Uh, hold on. Negasonic Teenage Warhead? Yeah! You see how fun this sounds? Now, before we go any further, there's something you need to know about me. I love me some Gina Carano. I think she's a future action star in the making. She's gorgeous. She's fit. She is an amazing martial artist. And even though she's playing a villain here, she plays the aforementioned Angel Dust. I was thrilled to see her on screen. Superhero landing. Yeah, that's really hard on your knees. Totally impractical. They all do it. You're a lovely lady, but I'm saving myself for Francis. That's why I brought him. I prefer not to hit a woman, so please, play. Then again, there weren't many moments during Deadpool when I wasn't thrilled. That owes more to the fact that this movie is paced within an inch of its life. The brilliant idea to start in the middle, then sort of Tarantino back to the origin story, then back to the freeway chase, then more origin story, then more violence. It just keeps things moving along and also disguises the fact there's really not that detailed of a story at all. It's like a meal consisting mostly of candy. 
The majority of the film's running time is merely spent on the action and the humor. So, although I began this review by saying that the movie is slight, that's in no way a bad thing. Not weighed down by any unnecessary constraints, this flick really moves! And the physical comedy, profane dialogue, graphic violence, oh, and did I mention the copious sex and nudity? Yep, if you're a grown-up, or a 13-year-old boy who his parents bought a ticket for, this movie truly has it all, and it's rewatchable as hell. I award Deadpool with a large bag of popcorn. With any luck, this will be a huge hit and take its place in history as the opening salvo in a whole irreverent franchise of films featuring the merc with the mouth. A violent, sexy, hilarious superhero movie for grown-ups. Wouldn't that be something? In an era where horror movies are getting watered down in order to receive a PG-13 rating, wouldn't it be great to have a series of films that dares to go the other way? That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos, and more importantly, click subscribe, so you can keep up with all the latest episodes, and so we can keep doing what we do. In the meantime, leave your comments below, and click the thumbs up if you like what you heard. Thanks for watching, I'm the Colonel, and it's time to make some chimichangas!